Welcome to the EQAO sample test. Today, we're going to be talking about the accessibility tools that you can use if you're in grade three or in grade six, writing your language and math EQAO test. Let's begin. Right now, I'm on the grade three version of the test. So I'm going to click enter. When I do so, you'll see I have two options. One is called tool exploration and the other is called assessment. If I look up to the top right of my page, you'll see there is a text to speech toggle. I can turn that on or off. Let's turn it on and you can actually hear the words on the screen being read to you. I'm gonna hover over it. Tool, tool exploration, assessment. And I'm now going to turn it off because I don't need it, but it is there as an option. Let's go straight into the assessment. This is just a practice test. In the practice test, you'll see that there's only session A and session B in language and stage one and stage two for math. On the real test, language will have session A, B, C, D, and math will have stage one, two, three, four. It won't look exactly the same. Here is what the grade six testing platform looks like. It looks a little bit different. And instead you can see I'm now in space and I have language, I have math, I have session A and B for language, stage one and two for math. Some of the accessibility tools are different in grade three compared to grade six, but I'll get to that when it's time. Let's start by doing um, a language session and checking out the accessibility tools in this module. I'm going to click next to begin. Now, the first thing I can see on my screen is a, a little blue circle with a book in it, and that's indicating that it's the text. Now, this is kind of like my progress bar. So I can see I'm at the first stop, which is the story, and I can scroll down and I can actually read it. And I know that all of these are the questions to the test. I can click on the questions at any time instead of just staying on the text page. But let's take our time and go through it. So the first thing you obviously want to do is read the story. Now, the accessibility tools here are fantastic because we can choose the way in which supports are learning the best. The first one on the right hand side where you can see your accessibility menu is called listen. So when I click on that listen button, a new menu pops up and it's actually a three minute and 14 second recording to read you the story from start to finish for the tulips. You'll also notice that I have some more options here. I can change the playback speed. Right now it's set to normal, but if I wanna speed it up, I can speed it up. If I wanna go down and slow it down, I can do that as well. I'll keep it to normal for now. This is your volume. I'm gonna click play. Waiting for the tulips. There are tulip flowers on either side of the title. There are three pictures in the text. The first picture is of cupped hands holding tulip bulbs. The second picture is of hands planting a tulip bulb. The third picture is of a plant starting to grow out of the ground. Ava drew back the curtains. Outside, the sun beamed, a robin hopped across the grass, and a squirrel darted around the yard. Notice that when I clicked play, it also read what images were on the document as well. So be prepared for any of that speech to text or text to speech rather being read to you to also describe the images that might be in the document. So I am now going to click the listen button off and it will disappear. The next tool is the zoom in and zoom out tool. We know that we've used these before, so that's pretty basic and explains itself. A really great tool that helps many individuals is called the line reader. So when I click on the line reader, I can actually position my line reader wherever I need. 
and it's going to allow me to read it line by line. So look at where my mouse is. My mouse is right here in the white part. I can see this bar just popped up and I can scroll down and read line by line. I can also use my finger on the touch screen and I can do that as well. So I like this because you only have to put the line reader in one area and then you scroll down so that you're reading line by line and this might be a helpful tool. The next thing is high contrast versus low contrast. So it's your preferences on how you're looking at the screen. What I also like is this highlighter tool. So I'm gonna turn it on and you might've seen very quickly a little gray ink layer, layer that laid itself on top of the text. So I'm gonna use my finger and I'm going to actually start highlighting some of the important information that I'm reading in the text because maybe I'm gonna look back at this and use it to help me when I'm answering the questions. You might do this or you might not, but it's another tool that helps us with our learning. I'm now going to turn that off. When I turn it off, you can see my highlights are still there. Excellent. So if you want to erase those, you can take that little eraser button and you can also erase. So it's however you see fit. I'm going to keep it, but I just wanted to show you that you can also erase it. And I wanted to show the grade sixes one last accessibility tool that the grade threes don't have. Right here under the eraser, you can see there's a button that says rough notes. I'm going to click on rough notes. And here is where I can actually write all of the notes that I might be thinking about for the story. So I'm going to say leaf cutter ants have a, an exo skeleton. They also eat bugs. And maybe as I'm reading, I can move this around if I need to. As I'm reading, I might continue to add some more. Uh, maybe I want to copy, control C, and paste something on here too, right? So I have the ability to do this and I can take my own notes. Now, the next part is the questions. You're done reading, it's time to answer the questions. So the first question is, when are the tulip bulbs planted and when do the tulips sprout? This is a drag and drop question, but sometimes it's easier instead of clicking back on the story, to read and scroll through to where you might find that answer. What you might want to do instead when you're at this question is click on the open slash close text link. I'm going to click that and automatically it comes into a split screen and I can see my story with all of my highlights and I can also see the question that I'm working on. This is a lot easier for me because I'm able to answer my questions while looking at my notes in the story. So I am going to answer these questions and I am going to put the answers where they go. I know it's one answer in each box. And when I do that, a star appears in that first question. That means that I can move on. Now, if I skip a question, for example, maybe I don't know how to answer question two, and I'm just gonna go to question three, and it says, in what two ways are leaves helpful in the tulip garden? Um, I'm going to pick these two. Oh, if I try to do more, it says that I've made too many choices. So in that case, I'm just gonna click off the one that I just did, and it turns into a star again. So I'm going to complete the test and you can see I'm not actually going to put any of the answers, but I'm going to just put my last answer in and I'm going to leave a few of them unanswered so you can see what happens.
Now, you can see on the bottom right hand side, there's a green submit button. So if you're in the full screen, that looks like this. If you're in the split screen like we just were, it pops up here as well. When I click on submit, it now shows me that I have not answered three questions in this session. Are you sure you want to submit? If not, click go back and review questions. If you're sure, click submit. So I do have the option to click on submit, even though I didn't answer the other questions, but what I would do is I would go back and review those questions and I would make sure that I would put an answer to each one so that I have all of the stars popping up. And now when I go back to that last question, I am ready to hit submit. You are not allowed to submit this test unless all of the stars and questions are complete. Please make sure to review your answers. So now what's great, you can see the list here that shows the test questions that you answered correctly, which ones you skipped and which ones you answered wrong. Um, but also just remember during the actual EQAO test, you'll not receive these types of results. So if I click on question one, I can actually see at the bottom here, the correct answer is autumn and spring, and I can double check my answers. Oh, I can see for question two, I got that one wrong. I said he cares for birds, but really it was he teaches Ava about tulips. So you can actually go through and check how you did. I'm going to click on continue. Now, once I do that and I click on that submit button on the real test, it's just going to bring you back to that lily pad and a star is now going to be on the session that you just completed. Congratulations, you just completed your first session in language. The next thing I wanted to do was to show you some of the math tools that you might want to use when you're writing the test. In grade three and in grade six, they're the exact same buttons. I'm gonna click on stage one for math. I'm gonna click on next. And I can see here that again, it's a select option for the answer, but I have all of these same options that I did before for my accessibility menu, but I also have a calculator that I can use. And I also have a button that says documents. So when I click on this documents button, any of the math vocabulary or math formulas that might be helpful for the questions in this test would be here. So you can always see some of the documents that might be helpful. I can also listen to those um, documents and those formulas by clicking on the play button. Et add, additionner, ajouter. They're in French as well because some students will be writing this test in French. If I don't need it, I'm just going to click off of it. And in grade six, that does look the same in math. I'm going to click and I can see I've got my calculator and I've got my documents with different formulas that might be helpful. Remember to review your work, everyone, and try your best. Thanks for listening.